Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, on this particular video, I want to talk to you about the order of execution. And you might be, if you're if you're kind of new to Salesforce, you might be thinking, well, what the heck is order of execution? Well, order of execution is what happens in a in the detail by detail uh, steps when you hit the save button in Salesforce. So you're saving a record. What are the items that happen? And to help guide you through this, I've created an infographic that I thought might be helpful for you. So let's let's take a look at that and talk through the different elements. This is something that as a admin or a developer, it's an important concept for you to understand because if if you are implementing a process or some form of automation and it's not running quite the way that you want it, and you're, you're pretty well sure you've got it written correctly, it could be that it's simply running in the order of execution in a place that is not where it's going to produce the result that you're looking for. So this is a concept that you're definitely going to want to be familiar with. So let's walk through each of the different pieces. So there is this concept of before a record is saved, to the database and after it's saved to the database. So you might be thinking, well, why is that? I mean, I'm saving the record, it's just saved, isn't it? And it's like, no, not quite. And so there is, in the middle of this diagram, you'll see there where we're saying the record is saved. And everything that happens prior to that point is, is happening um, before the record is saved, everything on the right hand side is happening after the record is saved but the entire process is what we would refer to as the transaction so when i hit that save button i'm starting a larger transaction of committing that record completely to the database so i i do save it in the middle and i have that before and i uh, then have my after actions and then it's committed so let's walk through each of those processes. The first item on that before is system out validation. System validation are those items like required fields on your page layout. It's items such as a date is formatted correctly or the email address is, is formatted like an email address. It could be things like um, the field length in the table supports up to 40 characters. So is the text that a person typed into a given field, is it more than 40 characters or less than 40 characters? Those are things they refer to here as system validation. Right after that fires, there is the new feature that I love and and you're going to hear me talk a lot about it in, in these videos. So subscribe if this is a new concept for you uh, because you will want to uh, watch those videos as I get them uh, produced. And that is the record trigger flow before. This is one of the most exciting um, enhancements from my point of view that I've seen for a while with Salesforce. Yeah, you've got lightning out there, and yes, it's cool, and I love it, just like I'm sure you do. So what's exciting about the record trigger before is that it gives the admin almost the same level of, of power that a developer might have when they're creating Apex triggers. So it kind of puts, the, puts us in, in, in line almost with what a developer can do. There are certain certainly things here that need to be enhanced on the before and after uh, record trigger flows, but it's coming along really nicely and I really like this feature. And the reason that you're going to want to learn to use it is that if you've been relying on process builder or workflow rules, doing some of that fun that, um, some of those processes within the flow before will speed up your process of saving this record significantly. So I, I think Salesforce says that it's going to be 10 times faster. I've not timed it. 
I'm going to take their word for it. I can tell you just from understanding the order of execution, it is going to be faster. So it's a good one to learn. And again, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe, hit the notify button so that you are informed as new videos come out. Because I'm going to be um, creating videos for you that will do a side-by-side -side of Process Builder and this these new um, record-triggered flows to help you learn that there really conceptually isn't significant differences. It's just a different tool that we're using. And so um, watch for those videos, and I will be getting those produced here soon. So that record trigger flow before runs. After that is the apex before triggers. So that's the piece where you need your developers to build for you. After your apex trigger flows, the system validation will occur again if it you know if it's needed so if you are if you've updated records or something like that it's needed to make sure that the there's integrity to the data and then your user validation rules will run so let's say i'm updating um, an account or adding inserting a new account record and i require a phone number or i require an address those are user validation rules that perhaps you have set up and that those will run after the uh, apex before triggers. The final step in the before side of this graphic is the duplicate rules. So if you've enabled Salesforce's out of the box duplicate uh, rules or matching rules, then those will run here. That, that is where it may prompt the user to indicate, hey, there could be another duplicate record out there. You might want to go check them, check it out just to make sure that you're not creating a duplicate record. Once that's done, like I mentioned before, then we are actually saving the data to the, to the table. And at that point, that record is going to get a Salesforce ID number associated to it. If you're inserting a record, it'll get an ID. If you're updating, it's already got an ID. So, it, but just so you conceptually understand what's happening in that particular portion of this process. So our record is saved, and now we move over to the after side of the order of execution. The first thing that runs are our apex after triggers. So again, that's where your developer is building items uh, to go off and do different things for you. And what's interesting to me is I would have thought, uh, when I first started looking at these record trigger flows, I kind of thought that the after record trigger flow would, would be right here um, before the apex trigger flow, since that's where they put it on the before side. But it's not. It's going to be way toward the end, so we'll get to that in a second. Um, after your apex um, after triggers run, any assignment rules, so that's going to be assignment rules on your lead or your case object will run. And then you get to the old standard uh, process automation tool that's been around forever, and that's our workflow rules uh, that had, um, that, you know, again, they've been around forever. I personally have encouraged people to start moving away from those if you still have those in your org. I would certainly look at transitioning those. Um, they're not going anywhere. It's just they are not as efficient, and you can't control the order in which they run. There's a lot of things related to those that we now have better tools to use. So I would hope that you would transition away from workflow rules. Now, if, if your workflow rule has a field update running, then that is going to potentially, it's going to cause your order of execution to move back over to that begin side of the order of execution, and it's going to repeat some of those processes. So it's, a, it's when you're doing those field updates on the after side, it causes an inefficiency because it's got a, the, the order of execution has to rerun some of those before items and save the record again in the middle. So that's the power of that record trigger before flow, because if I can do those things over 
on the right or on that left hand side before the record is saved. I have prevented myself from doing this this looping process that can happen when records are being saved. After workflow rules, then we have our uh, process builder will run and process builder is one of our other automation tools. And I, again, because, and, and I, I love Process Builder, it, it, it really took us a lot further down the road than where, where we were with workflow rules. However, there are some inherent issues with Process Builder and mostly around debugging those. And if you've ever seen those emails that come through that an error occurred and you're trying to decipher what the heck happened, you know what I'm talking about here. So my advice is learn flow and specifically those before trigger or the record trigger flows are something that you are going to want to understand and again i'm going to help you learn these so so stay engaged with me hang on and i'm going to help you get to where you're comfortable with building those flows and if we can move, start transitioning from Process Builder over to these record trigger flows, uh, it again is one of those evolutions in the in Salesforce that uh, will um, help you gain some significant efficiencies. So. I'm jumping all over the place here, and I, <laughs> I hope you're following pretty well. But after those process builders run, then your flows run. So that would be happening um, as well. So if you've got any flows that um, that maybe process builder is kicking off, uh, then those flows would run as well. The next step is your escalation rules and your entitlement rules. Those are specific to the case object and the service cloud uh, um, brings some of that capability into play. So those would run. And then you finally will get to that record trigger flow after. The, the record trigger flow after is very similar to the before, except for it's obviously after the save. Now, after the save, it's got some additional capabilities because after the save is where we might would go and update other records or other objects in the system. So when you're trying to determine, do I use a before or an after? Then the rule of thumb, and it's not a 100% rule, but it's pretty close, is if I'm updating the record that is being saved, I'm going to do that on the before. If I can, I want to do it in the before. If I'm updating a record or an object uh, that is different than the one that's being saved, then I'm going to do that in the after. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're trying to decide which one is the right one to use. After your record trigger flow, if you are on a child record that and, and its parent record has roll-up summary fields, then those roll-up summary fields are going to run and update the parent. Keep in mind that also because we're updating that parent record, it's going to cause the parent to run through this order of execution because it's got to save just like the child record does. So uh, that is something when you're running into issues where maybe the CPU is timing out when you're saving records, this is something that's really important because you've re you really do need to be careful when you're updating um, other records because they, it can have kind of a daisy chain effect that if I update, if, you know, when I save the, the current record, if it updates a, another record and that record updates another record and that one does another, you, you could run into some significant performance issues. So be careful with that. Um, design smart, uh, understanding how that, uh, how this order of execution process works. And then finally, we got through roll-up summaries, then the transaction finally is completed. So the, we have completed the entire cycle of this order of execution. The only thing that's not on the info diagram that you might want to understand is that, say you, you are sending an email 
uh, that, and that happens somewhere in this process. That email is actually going to get sent once the record has been committed. So that, that technically kind of happens after the transaction is committed. Now, also on the diagram, I've got the reference link here to Salesforce's help file if you want to actually read the detail related to how this works. Uh, that is certainly there. That's the official documentation from Salesforce as opposed to my uh, walking you through it. Uh, but um, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Again, please subscribe to the channel and um, I look forward to helping you grow.